In today's video, I show you how to install and configure Moodle. Thanks to June 5646 for the suggestion. Moodle is a very popular open source learning management solution, or LMS, for the delivery of e-learning courses and programs. It's basically an online classroom. Let's get Moodle installed. But before we get started, have you signed up to join our Discord server yet? If not, I'll leave a link below. It's a growing community where you can post questions and answers to tech questions, along with just hanging out with like-minded people. Join now so you don't miss out. Before we can get into the installation of Moodle, there's a few requirements that we need to get done ahead of time. One is a MariaDB or MySQL database. If you don't have MariaDB set up yet, see my video on MariaDB. The link is in the description. It's also up here. We're gonna be creating a database for Moodle using AdMiner. Once again, if you don't have AdMiner set up, I'll leave a link in the description. And you can also find it in the card up here. So I'm gonna jump over to AdMiner and let's get the database set up. To get to AdMiner, I'm gonna to go to my Docker tab. I'll find AdMiner in my database services folder and we'll open that up. For system type, it's a MySQL or MariaDB, so I'm gonna leave that alone. The server is gonna be the server IP address that your MariaDB server is located on. Mine's going to be my demo machine, 10.0.0.11. Username is going to be the username for your MariaDB database. Mine is root. Password, put in my super secret password. Then we'll hit login. There we go. We are in the database. So now to create a MariaDB database, I'm going to go up to the top here and click on create database. I'll give it a name. I'm going to call it Moodle because that's what I'm going to be installing. Then we'll hit save. Now we're going to need to create a user for that database. To do that, I'm going to go up to Privileges, then I'll click on Create User, and the username, I'm going to call it Moodle, and same with the password. Down below, where it says All Privileges, I'm going to select that option next to it, so that user will have all privileges. Then we'll scroll all the way down and click on Save. Now that the database is created, let's go create a share for Moodle's data. To do that, let's go back to Unraid, go to Shares, we'll click on Add Share, and for Share Name, I'm going to call it Moodle, keeping it simple. For comments, this is just kind of a note to yourself. I'm just going to put in here Moodle data. Primary storage is on the array. That's what I'd like. High watermark, all the other defaults here are fine. I typically leave it on all disks and I don't exclude anything. Once you've got your settings all set the way you want them, go ahead and hit add share. And then we'll click done. All right, for installation, let's go to apps. And in the search box, we are going to type in Moodle, M-O-O-D-L-E. There it is, it's the only one listed, so just click install. All right, on the attention window, it's notifying us of a couple different things. One, it has an additional requirement. It needs MariaDB or MySQL installed. We've already got that taken care of. Next down, it's telling me that the application has some ports in use. So go ahead and hit okay, and we'll look into that in a moment. All right, let's scroll down, and we will expand show Docker allocations. We'll go back up, and we'll look at the port numbers and see what's in use. So for port 8080, I'm pretty sure that one's already in use. I'm going to double click on it to highlight it. Hit control F on the keyboard and it shows me three results. One, two, scrolling down. And there's number three. So that one's in use. Normally I would just increment by one. So 8081, then if that's in use, 8082. If you look down here, you'll see 8081 and 8082 are already used. And I looked earlier, and I think the next available one for me is 8087. So that's what I'm going to change mine to. I'm going to scroll back up, change it to 8087. Once again, I'm going to double click on it. Control F shows one result. That one's good to use. Next down, we've got 8443, which I believe that is in use as well. Let's check real quick. It shows three in use, these two, and then one down below. So let's go ahead and change this one to, I'm going to increment by one, making it 8444. And we'll check that one. And that one's clear. So we're good to use that. Scrolling down a little bit. Moodle path. Gonna leave that in the default. That is the location for the app data information. Next down, we've got Moodle data. Right now, this is set to go to the app data folder as well. And we don't want all that data in the app data folder. It's gonna make our Docker container image fill up and grow. We don't need that. We just created a share. So let's set it to the share we just created. So I'll click into that field and we're going to back up here. We don't need this. Let's get rid of app data. We'll end it there with the user, do a forward slash. Let's click in there again. Now let's browse to our Moodle share. If we look through the list, we should find Moodle listed and it's right there. I'll go ahead and select it. And I want to put it in another folder inside of that. So I'm going to add the word 
data to the end of it. All right, next down, we've got MariaDB hostname or IP address. This is going to be the hostname or IP address of your MariaDB server. For me, it's going to be 10.0.0.11. You'd put in your server's IP address here. Next down, we've got MariaDB database port number. 3306 is the default. That's what mine's set at. If yours is different, just go ahead and set it to whatever your server is. Next down, we've got database name. Right now, it's Bitnami Moodle. I kept it a little more simple and just named it Moodle. Same with the database user. Instead of BN Moodle, it is just Moodle. Once again, if your database is named something different or your database user is something different, just make sure you put in the proper information. Same goes with the next field, which is the database password. Once again, this one I set to Moodle, just keeping it really simple. All right, next down, we've got Moodle username. This is going to be the username for the default user in Moodle. Right now it's set to user. I'm going to change this to admin. You can set it to whatever you'd like. The Moodle password, right now it's got Bitnami set as the default. I'm going to change that to something that fits me. Next down, we've got PHP memory limit. It's currently set at 256 megs. That should be sufficient, so I'm going to move on. The rest of these settings here are all SMTP related, so mail protocol stuff. And you will need to set these up according to your email provider settings. I found the easiest way to figure out what that is, is just to get on Google and type in whatever your email provider is, the name, and then SMTP settings. So for Gmail, it's going to be smtp.gmail.com. SMTP port is going to be 587. The SMTP password is going to be your full email address for Google. So whatever that is, aliantech42 at gmail.com, something like that. And then the SMTP password is going to be the password that you use for your account. However, I strongly recommend you use Google's app passwords. To do that, you're going to go to myaccount.google.com slash app passwords. I'll leave a link in the description. Doing that, you can create a password just for Moodle here. It's kind of a single use password. And then lastly, we've got the SMTP protocol, and that's going to be IMAP. And that's the end of the list here. However, there are a couple things that they're not 100% necessary, but if you're going to be uploading larger files to Moodle, then you're going to want to add these two things here. So let me show you how to add them. So I'm going to hide Docker allocations just to clean that up a bit. At the bottom here where the plus is, add another path, port, variable, label, or device. Go ahead and click on that. So for the path, we're going to change this to a variable. Let me just back up a second here and let me tell you this. The reason that I added these is because on my Moodle site that I have internally, I have a lot of video files on there and they're bigger than the default size that Moodle will allow. So I upped it to a gig for upload. So both of these settings that we're setting up here, take that into account and I set them for a gigabyte. You can adjust up and down from there. All right, moving on. The next section here is name. It's an extra environment variable. Don't need a space in there. And then the key is going to be php underscore upload underscore max underscore file size. And it's all in caps. Next, we have value. That is one capital G for one gigabyte. And this you set according to whatever size you're going to need. You can always go back here and change these later on if you need to be you know bigger. One gigabyte seemed to be pretty good for me, so that's where I'm going to leave it. Default value. We're going to leave that blank. Then under description, we'll put in here what it's for. So this is going to be for max upload file size. Then we'll click add. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to click add another path port variable label or device. We're going to choose variable again. The name is going to be extra environment variable. The key is going to be php underscore post underscore max underscore man i'm having a rough time here size the value once again is going to be one and a capital g or one gigabyte default value we'll leave that blank and for the description i'm going to call it max post size verify everything is correct looks good and then click add now we should be all set scroll to the bottom and click apply and once that's done go ahead and click done and before we go to the next section if you're getting some value from this video, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe while you're down there. All right, let's go start this thing up. Let's jump over to our Docker tab. We'll find Moodle in the list here. Over on the right hand side, we're going to toggle on auto start. Now, on the first time you start up Moodle, it's going to take a few minutes 
for everything to get set up. It's going to create the database and download everything and get it all, all good and going. So let's check the logs to see the progress of that. So over on the Moodle icon, I'm going to click on it, drop down, and we're going to go to logs. And you'll see here, the last line right now for me says running Moodle install script. So it's still installing it. We need to just sit back and wait. What we're looking for is Moodle setup finished. So I'm going to pause here, let it do its thing, and I'll be right back. I just thought of something. I just got another mini PC in the mail. So I'm going to be doing a review on this here shortly. It doesn't look too bad from the initial you know specs I looked at it, but just so you know, we got another mini PC review coming up. And on that same note, I got a message from the developer of an app on Android called Jelly Watch. And from what I've seen on it, it's an app that allows you to monitor your Jellyfin server. You can see what your users are watching. You can get real-time stats and even receive alerts if your Jellyfin server goes down. And that's all from your Android phone. So I'm going to be looking into that here shortly, and I'll let you know how that goes. And for any of you using Jellyfin, I think it'd be a nice thing to add. If that sounds interesting to you, drop me a message down in the comments. All right, I'm back. That took about 10 minutes in my system to get installed. So I'll exit out of there. I'm going to go up to the Moodle icon, click on it, drop down, and select Web UI. And there we go. There's our Moodle site set up. Nothing in there. Let's go ahead and log in in the top right. Make sure that our admin account works. Click on login. Username, I had set it to admin, and then my password was super secret. And we'll click login. There you have it. Moodle is installed and working on Unraid. If there's enough interest in creating a basic course, I'll make a follow-up video walking you through the process. If that's something that you'd like, let me know in the comments. But for now, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, consider becoming a Patreon. Patreon members get direct access to me, early access to my videos, and they are ad and sponsor free. The link is in the description. Until then, check out one of these next, and I'll see you in the next one.